Good morning everybody and welcome to your new video. Today we are going to talk about what's in my camera case 2021 and I'm literally going to show you everything that I have in this bad boy right here. So roll the intro. start things off i think we do have to talk about the case itself that i'm using which is this tough case right here as uh, you will see similar products by companies like pelican for example but the difference is this case is made in germany and also the insert bag that i'm using in there is made in germany by the company so therefore that's what i decided to use for transportation and storage of my personal gear the first thing that i want to show you is this little pouch that i keep in my camera case at all times what it stores is a bunch of canon LP E6 batteries that I personally need for my uh, primary buddy right now and I have them in here so they can keep warm uh, during transportation or storage so they don't lose any capacity during that time. The second pouch that I want to show you is an important one for me and I always have to make sure that I have this on me and that's simply because my uh, primary editing device is an iPad Pro uh, 11 inch and um, therefore it only has one USB-C hub. I always have to keep a bunch of these adapters to be able to read my uh, SD card, CF card and also my hard drive where I store all the images from the day of shooting so I don't lose any of the footage that I have. Now we are continuing with a more exciting part of what's in my camera bag, probably what all of you have been waiting for, lenses and camera buddies. Actually just one camera buddy right now but I will talk about it a little bit later in the video. Um, the lenses that I'm going to show you these are my personal holy trinity of lenses throughout my photography journey these are the lenses that i personally felt fitted my needs the best and i've used quite a bit by canon and also some of sigma and this i will tell you which ones they are and also what I, exactly i'm using them for so i hope you guys can relate out there starting off we are actually starting with a small lens a canon 16 35 f4 is um i waited quite a long time to actually buy this lens because i was not sure if it actually is going to be something that i want as a wide angle lens and i finally chose the f4 version over the f2.8 because the f4 does have an uh, uh, image stabilizer which i heavily rely on with having shaky hands and also it saves you a couple hundred bucks uh, in your wallet if you go with the f4 version and it does fit, fit my needs just perfectly uh, so therefore 1635 uh, is what i use for wide angle shots and landscapes environmentals where the where wildlife is inside to show the broad in, environment that they live in so that's exactly what i use this 1635 for The next lens that I'm about to show you is actually a lens that was in my kit from the beginning of my photography journey. It was the very first lens that I bought outside of the kit that I had back in the day. And I have to say, I'm still absolutely fascinated with this lens and I've used it a ton, which is the 7200 f 2.8 uh, IS Mark II. Um, what I use this lens for is obviously it has a great focal length from 70 all the way to 200 in the telephoto uh, range. Um, and I use it for versatility, you know, when it comes to wildlife shooting, especially in a situation where I don't know what I'm going into. Uh, this is exactly what I have on my camera buddy because I am prepared for everything. I, if I want to take landscape, if I want to take environmentals, I can take close-ups of animals depending on the range or depending on the distance that they, that they have to me. So the 7200 is really just a versatile lens that I use for all kinds of shooting. And if I don't know what I'm going to get into, this is exactly what I use for that. The next lens that I'm about to show you is probably a lens that you wouldn't expect necessarily uh, being the primary telephoto lens of a wildlife photographer, but I personally had to find a lens that fits my needs and also does get the job done for me personally. Uh, so after using a Canon 300 f 2.8 Mark I, after using the Canon 500 f 4, uh, I decided to go with a Canon 300 f 2.8 IS Mark II. So back in the day, the, the Mark I version of this lens is absolutely amazing. The one thing is it is 
at, at some point it was just a little bit too slow, a little bit too loud for me personally. So I decided to go with the Mark II version of this lens. And there's literally just one thing that I hate about it, and I hate it about the Mark I as well, which is this stupid tripod foot. Who is going to hold the telephoto lens with body attached on here and being able to carry it around? So I always put a long Arca Swiss plate. This one is 12 centimeters long on there so I can grab it with my full hand and carry it around. So this lens is what I chose to be my primary, uh, uh, yeah, my prime uh, fixed telephoto lens um, because simply it does get the job done and it's really really easy to get from point A to point B especially because I'm hiking a lot while searching for wildlife and what I use this lens for is obviously close up from animals I just dig this very close images of the face of the animal and also if I have a, a, a long distance between me and the subject that I want to capture this is exactly what I need to when I'm not able to reach it with a 200 millimeter and the 300 millimeter is probably living on my uh, cam main camera buddy for almost all the time and this is exactly what I use as my primary telephoto lens. All right, what I've shown you now is my personal holy trinity of lenses, and I actually want to continue with the camera buddy that I pair these lenses with. Right now, it's just one camera buddy, and the reason for that is that I wanted to test out this new buddy and uh, chose to sell my 1DX and my 7D Mark II to be fully uh, into the new camera buddy that I have right in front of me. Um, and the camera buddy that I'm talking about is a Canon EOS R. Uh, which was bashed by the photography community, especially for wildlife photographers, uh, for month and month and end. But after using it personally for my wildlife photography, this is exactly what fit fit my needs the best, to be honest. Uh, and there's one reason for that, which is silent shooting. Um, a friend of my, me told me quite a while to finally go mirrorless because of the silent shooting. Uh, and I was like, ah, but the Canon EOS R is so slow. It only shoots five pictures per second in a continuous continuous autofocus uh, and you know the yeah, 1DX and 7D Mark II are just absolutely amazing uh, uh, camera buddies but after picking up the Canon EOS R and actually being able to shoot silently especially with the shy animals that I personally prefer to shoot for example badgers, foxes, roe deer, red deer if they hear that noise of a 1DX or a 7D Mark II sounding like a machine gun inside the forest uh, they do tend to run or just look away, get into a position where they hide. But with the Canon EOS R, shooting silently and almost having no sound of the, the lenses and the image stabilizers, um, they ob obviously, if you do a good job of getting into the area, they will not be able to tell that you're even there or that you, are, uh, that you take pictures of them. So silent shooting was just a big game changer. And also what I love about the... the um, Canon EOS R is the 1.6 crop mode uh, because that allows me compare like uh, paired with the Canon 300 millimeter to get much closer to the animal that I normally would to. So again, it does give me versatility with pairing the Canon EOS R and the 300 millimeter in all the other lenses simply because I can choose to crop 1.6 into the sensor. So that's exactly why I decided to go with the Canon EOS R. And the reason why I don't have a secondary buddy right now is because I haven't decided whether I am going old school with a secondary buddy, which would be a Canon 1DX, or if I'm going to get another Canon EOS R as a secondary buddy because I prefer the silent shooting. Uh, so right now that's a decision that I have to make in the near future to be able to uh, actually have two lenses on two buddies and not being able to switch or, or not needing to switch camera lenses all the time. So I will update you on that if you're interested. All right, you guys, you made it almost through the whole video. There's just one small piece of equipment that I want to talk about in the end, which is this little guy, a uh, peak design camera slide. Um, and this is very crucial to my photography. And I tell you why I absolutely hate camera straps that are constantly on the camera body or on the lens, uh, because they're always in the way. So I decided to go with a peak design slide uh, as I can take it off very easily. And also as I'm hiking a lot, searching for wildlife, it is just way easier to change it up from carrying the lens and the body in the hand and on the strap from time to time so I don't get exhausted too quickly. 
Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all that I carry in the camera case and that I take with me on a wildlife shoot all the time. So I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you like wildlife photography and are into these kinds of videos. So therefore, peace out. I catch you in the next one.